So you've just bought your brand new DJI Mini 3 and before you go off and fly, there are some settings that you need to change to get the most out of this drone and to prevent you crashing it on your first flight. Let's get into them. So you've got your drone, you've got it all set up. The drone's now on the floor, so don't set it off yet in the air. These are things you need to go through and make sure it's all set correctly before it completely ruins your flight. Once the drone's in the air, you're going to be wasting battery life as well, and you've got more chance of crashing this drone if you don't follow these steps. First thing to do, check your altitude and distance. By default, these could be set to some random numbers. So you want your max altitude to be the max altitude that you can go in your country. So here in the UK, it's 120 meters. So I would slide this to 120 meters there. If you don't change that, you might get your drone in the air and once it reaches about 30 meters, it might say max altitude reach. And you'll be like, what's wrong with the drone? It's, it's knackered this, it's not. It's because you've not changed your max altitude height. Max distance, again, by default, 20 meters is what it's showing on here. I don't want the drone to only be able to go 20 meters away. So change that, again, depending on how far you wanna go or depending on your country's restrictions. So make sure you slide that. Now, a really key one here is that if you lose signal, DJI have this great feature called return to home. So if the drone cuts out, loses signal, it will return back to your home location but it needs to be at a certain height. So when we look on here, again under safety, it says auto return to home altitude. And this is now showing 50 meters. Now this needs to be higher than the tallest building or object in your area. So if you're filming, for instance, in the middle of the countryside and you've got loads of tall trees, you don't want your max altitude to be 50 meters in height because if it loses connection it will then come back at 50 meters and it could hit one of those trees and crash so i would have this set to say 100 meters or maybe 120 meters so it can clear those trees and this is going to heavily change depending on your environment that you're in so make sure you are following and looking at that and changing it at every single different location you go to. And if you scroll to the very bottom of that screen, you will see advanced safety settings. And, and we'll see here, signal lost, return to home, descend or hover. So if you lose signal, what do you want the drone to do? Now, 80% of the time, you want the drone to return back to you. So make sure return to home is selected. Make sure it is not showing descend because if it loses signal over a forest or in a city, the drone will just descend. So that's something you never really want to select pretty much ever. Hover, this can be useful if you're in say a city and the max building in there is really, really tall, 400 meters high, let's just say for example, your drone's gonna have to clear that, which means you're going to break all your country's restrictions. So if you lose signal, you want the drone to then hover in place. You can then physically get to a position where you are closer to the drone or you can regain signal and then take back control. In that situation, return to home, basically avoiding and going around all of these big tall buildings is just a massive disaster waiting to happen. And this is also handy if you are on a lake. You see, if you're returning the drone home, it will return back to your location where you started off from. So say you're at a harbor and you took the drone off and you got in your boat and you went off in the boat a little bit. If your drone loses connection, it will go back to that harbor and land there, somewhere you're not. So in that situation, you want the drone to hover in place. So then your drone will just stay in the air, hovering in place, and then you could go over to it on your little boat and then regain connection. But these change a lot. So return to home or hover, where you are, think about it, and make sure they're changed accordingly. So now you've done the safety settings, we want our content to look really good. You've bought a good drone, we want our photos and videos to replicate that. So by default, your video quality on the settings is defaulted to 1080p, so HD quality, good, but it's not as nice as 4K. So I would click on the 1080p, and change that to 4K to get the 4K HDR quality coming from your drone. Now, photos are the same. If you click on photos, you'll notice it says JPEG, but this can take photos in JPEG and RAW. So what RAW photos do, it captures more detail, more information in that photo. And then if you were to go into say Lightroom, you can tweak it, you can edit it, you can do a lot more color tweaking to that photo without destroying it completely like a JPEG would. So majority of professional photographers out there would always shoot in RAW so they can edit their photos. Now the photos coming out of here, you don't really need to edit them, you can just use JPEG, but it gives you that option. 
you get a JPEG file and you get a RAW file. So if you take this stunning landscape and you might think, oh, it looks pretty good that, but then you can actually learn how to color correct, color grade, you could take that photo to even better results by using a RAW file as well. So change that from JPEG to JPEG and RAW. And talking of that, by default on QuickShot. So QuickShot is these really cool videos. You can just drag a box around you at different locations and you get these quick shots built into this drone. So the drone does it all for you. These are also by default in 1080p. 1080p is all right, but 4K just looks better. Even if you upload to social media in 1080p, it will downscale it from 4K. So it's gonna look better than just 1080p. If you want a 1080p drone, the Mavic Mini, which was out years ago, was a 1080p drone. This is 4K, let's use it. So click on 1080p in quick shots, change that to 4K. Now, once you've actually had fun with this and you've got some photos and videos, you might already know about different pro settings in cameras and videos, you might not. This is something you should learn because this is going to be able to give you full control over the camera on here. So when you're in photos and videos, you can click in the bottom right hand corner and change it from auto to pro. So this will now allow you to change the ISO and the shutter speed and the white balance. So it means then you can then completely get the most out of this. So if you're shooting at low light, so nighttime for example, if you shoot in, in auto, what the drone will do, it will bump the ISO to basically keep that exposure correct. But what that does is that then introduces a lot more noise into the photos and videos. So you can see in this video here, I had it in pro settings and I actually had my ISO under, so it was underexposed and it was lower than what the drone wanted to do. You can see this looks really nice and sharp because this is an f1.7 aperture. So I want to take advantage of that. I want to have full control over this sensor. So I can do in pro settings. Now, a good example of pro settings is to use ND filters. And this is probably a really good second accessory to pick up. So these are by Freewell. I've been working with these for years now. These just go on the front of the drone and it allows you then to get the proper motion blur and the proper settings all dialed in. Because it's an F1.7, it lets a lot of light into the sensor. So ND filters are basically like sunglasses for the drone. So it prevents all that light going in and you get this much nicer video. On my Mini 3, my Mini 3 Pro, the Mavic series, there is always an ND filter on that drone all of the time. So after batteries, the second thing you should pick up are ND filters. If you want the ones I use, I'll link them down below. Getting your photos and videos composed is really key to making that photo look great. It's about the rule of thirds. So we can do this on the drone itself by having grid lines on it helps you framing everything so to help you do that you can get these grid lines that come on the drone screen as well so you can see it on the screen if we go to camera scroll down to where it says grid lines and you've got a choice of three i would keep the rule of thirds ones which is the middle one on all of the time sometimes if i'm doing intricate movements like i'm doing parallaxes i will put all three of them on but as a minimum i would keep the rule of thirds grid line on all of the time so i really recommend you go and putting that on right now. Now, if you look in the bottom left hand corner, you will see your height and your distance indicators. But you can also see this little marker. Now this is a map, but if we click on it and click in the bottom right hand corner, you could change this now to an attitude indicator. So like a compass, but this will show you lots of key things when you're flying the drone. It will show you the drone's orientation. So if it's getting battered by the wind, you'll be able to see how it actually is performing. And then maybe you should think, maybe I should bring it back because it looks like it's under a lot of strain. You can also see the actual position of it compared to where you are. So you will see a little dot where you are, and then you'll see another dot where the drone is. So having this compass on and keep checking it often is really important. The map is okay as well. You can click on the map and then you can see where you are. And this is also decent, but the attitude indicator is the one I would suggest you have on as default. Now, depending on which country you're in, you might use miles per hour, you might use kilometers an hour, you might use meters per second, it all changes, doesn't it? But if you want to change them, you might see by default, it's not correct. So you might have it as feet, or you might see it as meters. Now, if you go to control and then click on aircraft units, you will see and be able to change from metric meters, metric kilometers or imperial. So whatever you want to use, you would change them as well especially if you're basically flying, you've never flown the drone before and you know it's got to be set 120 meters, you know, make sure that is correct so you can see it on the screen. Yes, I'm now at 110 meters, I know what I'm at, rather than it be like, I'm at 318 feet, 390 feet, 
it's easy to set it correct to what you're used to, what your country actually works under. So I would go and change that now. This, remember, has no obstacle avoidance sensors. So if it's your first flight, if you just pick this drone up or you've received it as a present for Christmas, you're gonna be so eager to fly this and it's a fantastic drone. Go and get to a location where it's really nice open space if you can. Don't be flying it in your back garden as your first flight because you probably will be tempted to fly it a bit further away. There'll be neighbors houses and all sorts. I would go to a big open field. Try and avoid anything where it's over water to start with and certainly over any trees or big obstacles. And just get comfortable flying this drone. Maybe fly it just like 100 meters away. Get some photos, get some videos. Just enjoy it, get used to the controls change these settings and have fun with it. And then as you gain confidence, you'll be able to do more things. And I've got so many videos about how to get the most out of your drones. So if you're new around here and you like this video, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let me know about these settings, but overall just have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed that guys. See you soon, bye bye.